But if you're in income, and if you think income, this could be where the bad car wreck was, and we're evacuating a two mile radius around the bad car wreck. And that could be a red circle instead of a green circle. And this is all done with your software, with Vapors IS32, or with UIV32, or uh, YAC, or Exaster. All of them are capable of doing this. How much does that software cost, Kenny? It's free. Yeah, it's free and on the internet, okay? What do I need in order to access, uh, you said something about a sound card? How much does a sound card cost? Well, I know a guy out in Nashville, uh, he, uh, he's really, really good at this. He goes and gets those seven and eight dollar sound cards off the uh, internet, Amazon, and hooks them up to his computer and they seem to do just fine. You can get a $130 signal link, and that's great if you want to. You can buy them second-handed at, at the flea markets and the ham fest for a lot less than that, but you can get on Amazon and find you a pretty doggone good saver and sound card for $14, $15, okay? Then you've got the software in the computer, a cheap laptop, okay? Or a Pi computer. I know a guy out next to Nashville that's, uh, that promotes these Pi computers and they're pretty good at doing stuff like this. Uh, so you put that on there, and then you have to have a two meter radio that's capable of doing one frequency, 144.390 in North America. So if you shop around and be careful, you can build that paper system, which does a whole lot more than your handheld, and a whole lot more than the 400s, okay? It does a whole lot more, probably less than $200, and that's being a little extravagant, you know, with the computer and everything else. So um, it lets you do more than what the handheld does, especially the new Chinese versions that are coming out that just do absolutely nothing. They're telling you they have per perfected the transmit side of vapors, but they do nothing on receiving. With one exception, they will process the audio that comes out and they'll let you hook up a sound card, and they'll let you hook up a computer to the audio that comes out of that handheld so that you can then have a complete full station. So, you know, all not lost. But one of the things we wanted to communicate here was that you want to use papers to put information out for people to use. This is just sad, because I watched Ian, and after Ian was over with, the Aper's community survived, they still existed, but they put absolutely nothing on the radio and they could have been reporting immediately what was going on in the community. But the problem was, no one was thinking to use it. We always think of vapors as, I need to tell everybody where I'm at driving up and down the road. And that's your position report, and these are called objects. It's whenever you take your device and you tell everybody else where something is, where something's going on, okay? How many of you have the Kenwood 5 or 710s? You have Kenwood 710s? Okay, they have the personality modes. You select the different personalities, okay? And if you look at Brunica's suggestions, you can dedicate, dedicate one of those personalities to doing objects, okay? I'm not gonna go into detail on it, uh, but he, he does have a, a pretty good uh, little, little paper on it. Let's scroll out just a little bit. So we've seen circles, we've seen objects, what else is going on around here? Okay, uh, the GMRS folks. Okay, they like to go up into the Cohetta. Here, right here it says, this is a pretty nice area. Okay, and we've drawn a big box around it. Okay, and that box is about uh, a mile, two miles wide, and it's about five miles long. Just says it's a nice area. And here it says we're having a meeting. There's also another one out here that's uh, in that area I said, no, that's where you live, Bill, right here. Let's go a little bit further. Yeah, we're this nice there. area is where they had a, what, tornado at your house two years ago? Yeah, 2020. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it, we're calling it nice area here because we don't want to say tornado and, and paint it up red and get people coming to it and responding to an emergency. But that's how you would display an area that's been damaged by a tornado if you wanted to do that. And the software, just it's just simple selections. You can draw a box, you can draw it out on the screen. Do you want it green, yellow, or red? Click it. And how often do you want it to transmit? 
And uh, boom, there it goes. All right, let's go a little further east and go into the Cahutta. Ah, here we go. Here's a polygon. It's marked up as a Jeep trail. We're covering this area because there's going to be some four-wheel drive activity in that area. Uh, here's a fork in the road. Okay, highlight over the fork right here. And right click, tell me what it says. Okay, you know, click on fork. Okay, it's a fork in the road. I'm communicating some information to you, left or right. Okay, that's benign. That's intended to be benign. But it could be the Jeep is broke down here, send the record here. Any kind of information that you need to put in there, and it's real time. Uh, I didn't set and compose these, you know, three weeks ago or whatever. These, these have been transmitted to the internet in the last 10 minutes, and they're updating every 10 minutes. Here's another one that says steep. Let's highlight it. Okay, steep. Steep trail here, monitoring flagship 675, which that's one of their GMRS repeaters that they have on this map here. And uh, that's just a piece of information we wanted to communicate. And it's acres, everybody can see it, everybody in the whole world can see it. Now, how did this information get here? Okay, that was easy. I did sit down and compose these a couple of nights ago, but the way they got here was on my truck this morning, sitting out in the parking lot. There's a transmitter running five watts, okay? And it's transmitting these objects even as we speak, okay? If I turn that transmitter off in 30 minutes, these will go away. They'll all disappear. But that's originating from my truck, and it's just a laptop, a sound card, and a radio. A single, single channel, 144.390. Questions, comments, snide remarks. I saw that stuff coming in while I was coming up. There you go. Yeah. You're the person that I'm looking for. It okay. Popped up on my radio. Yeah, it popped up on your radio and you were what in the world is this? Yeah. That's kind of unusual, wasn't it? Yeah. You don't normally see this on acres. Why? Why do we not use it? We sit there and we look at it, and what do we see? We see cars going up the road. Trucks going down the road. We see the house over here, the digipeter over there, but we never put information on it. The state of Tennessee used to put motor vehicle accidents on acres, and they were in real time. They were injected into the RF. If you were driving down the road, you'd see a little accident icon pop up wherever it was, and it would tell you about the accident and when it was reported, okay? And in 30 minutes, if it wasn't updated, it would go away. The National Weather Service, to this day, still does this. Any storm warning, any, not the, not the, uh, not the watch. Not the watch, yeah, but any storm warning will appear on acres. Now, if you're on acres.fi, or if you're using your handheld or whatever, it's just going to give you a little bit, a little blip or a blob or something to point towards an icon. But if you're using a computer with the software, with the client software, you'll actually see the warned area pop up, uh, much like you saw this, this polygon here. The Jeep trail, that can also be a polygon. That's, that's, uh, if it's red, it's going to represent it. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. If it's green, there's no, no problem there. If it's yellow, there's caution. If it's red, pay attention to it. It could be a tornado. Okay. And it shows you the warned area. So those are just examples of how you could use objects. Do I have to have any special software? Yes. You have to have Acres IS32 or UIView32 or YAC, any of the client software that does multi-line objects. And by the way, all of them do. Okay. It's, it's an integral part of Acres. It was built for you, for you to use, but you have to use it. If you don't, the information will never be there for anyone else to enjoy. What's your name, sir? John. John, where were you coming in from? Uh, just coming in from Cummings, Georgia. Cummings, Georgia, yeah. Uh, when did you start seeing this information? Uh, I noticed it, I was on 75 more, just about, just almost to get off the exit. Okay, all right, okay. 
Uh, at the time the title started transmitting as we were coming over the mountain, the wide open mountain. So about the same time we were starting when he began to see it. Go ahead, sir. What controls are in place to deal with uh, bad actors who may want to put disinformation out through this system? Same controls that we have for all of amateur radio. We are self-policing, okay? On each one of those icons and objects that you've seen is not Bill. It's not his, his call sign, okay? You can see right sign. here it says the owner of the object is Ken. Yeah, it's my call, his call sign. sign. So if that object <clears throat> is transmitted, they, it instantly out on the network, they're going to know who transmitted it, okay? They have to have a call sign. If a call sign is not seen, the internet side of it rejects it, okay? And the clients, within reason, will reject it. And if you start seeing information that you think is false, you can immediately interrogate that, that, that station. And if they fail to give you a right answer, you can delete that station and you can delete them from the digitators. And then they don't get back in. So there is, there is, yes, there is a capability or possibility of somebody putting false information in, but it'll be recognized almost as fast as someone getting on a repeater and saying breaker, breaker, one night. Okay, that's not going to, that's not going to last long, okay? Uh, here's your good one, okay? Uh, I won't use guys' call sign, won't give you enough information to identify him, but he was chasing hurricanes, okay? Great guy, wonderful guy, good Christian man. New to Avers, okay? So you know whenever we have hurricanes on Avers, the National Weather Service puts them in, and they're updated every 30 minutes, and we can actually track them for about 36 hours out and see where they're going and where they've been. And it's always identified as a hurricane, gives you the wind speed and the direction it's traveling in the, in the uh, information posit. And that's free and real time for you, okay? Well, this guy goes to, to doing his hurricane tracking, and he looks at Apers and he says, wow, I'm uh, tracking a hurricane. So when he selected his icon, he selected a hurricane. And every time he was on a hurricane, we would see the hurricane coming up through the Gulf, and then we'd see him over here in the coast of Florida and going back and forth. Well, what he didn't realize is the software is designed to select the tracking based on the icons. So a lot of us were tracking the hurricane icon, and we're looking at the hurricane, I think this was Michael, and every now and then we just see it jump over here in the middle of the state of Florida, and it was him where we set a posit, and we, you know, we just looked at his icon, it gave us his call sign, we sent him the email, and he said, oh, that's how that works. Yeah, then he changed his icon, everything was just fine.